Hello, this is part two in a mini-series on probability measure and we introduced the concept of fields and what this is we need to develop structure around our sample space and subsets of our sample space where we can define a probability measure. Now we're not going to get into probability measures or measurable spaces for two or three more videos but this development of structure for that you know probability measure is so important so we're just going to go through this now one one note is that mathematicians tend to call this structure an algebra where statisticians tend to call it a field and so in honor of my profession I'm going to call it a, a field okay so first of all we have a sample space and we're going to take a subset of the sample space we're going to denote it by F and if F meets these next three properties it's called a field and it's very simple three but it then becomes you know you take that and it becomes complicated quickly but the underlying structure is very simple F is non-empty if A if the set A is in F then A complement is in F and if we have two sets in F then it, their union pairwise union is in F and that's it so if our subset of our sample space or universal space meets these three criteria then it's called a field okay so now there's a corollary from these so given these three assumptions and that's all that we need to meet these next two are also implied so S and the empty set is in F and we're gonna uh, we'll show that given these we're gonna prove these corollaries so just given these three assumptions we now know that S and, and the empty set is in F and also if we have say N sets in A or in F then we know their finite union is in F and we also know their finite intersection is F and this is called being closed under finite unions and intersections this is a field so now let's let's uh, let's try to prove these sets here so for one now um, so F1 implies there exists an A in F because F is non-empty now F2 implies that the complement is in F so now we know that A and A complement are in F and based on F3 we know this union of two sets in F is also in F but the, the A union A complement is S so, so the sample space is in F and then since the sample space is in F its complement which is the empty set is also in F okay so this proves that every field has to have the sample space as a set and the empty set okay and it turns out that the smallest possible field is a set with two elements the entire sample space and the empty set okay and it's called the trivial field which we'll talk more about in a second so part two um, we want to show that it's closed under finite unions so if we have two sets in F we we know that based on F3 their union is in F okay um, and we also know that that if A1 is in F A1 union A1 which is A1 is also in F so that's kind of like for n equal 1 and n equal 2 you know is in F so now let's assume it's true for k minus 1 sets we're going to use induction so let's assume these k minus 1 sets are in F then we know that this finite union is in F so now let's let sets A1 through AK be in F and if we look at their union from 1 to K and we know that union is associative it means it doesn't matter which way we union things we can union the first K minus 1 with the last one okay but since this union is in F so this is a set so we have this set, union with this set is in F by F3. 
but that's this finite union so finite unions are in F okay so now to, to uh, prove the intersection we know that if if we have sets AJ through AJ comp you know, or AJ and AJ complement in F right because if AJ is in F then AJ complements in F we know that their finite union is in F so the union of all these complements is, are back in F you know since these are all in F then by F2 we know that its complement is in F and so this we just determined was in F so its complement has to be in F but by De Morgan's law this which is this is actually the intersection of all these AJ's is in F so it's closed under the intersection of a uh, finite number of sets okay so let's look at some uh, some abstract or examples so and we call them class so a class of subsets of the sample space so class one where there's only two elements is a called a trivial field we have class two which is all possible subsets of our sample space um, now it, it's either it's called a power set or a discrete field depending upon whether you're a mathematician or a statistician um, and and actually I, even though I am a statistician I've always called it a power set but I'm going to try to call it a discrete field to keep true to my profession uh, C, the class C3 is also a, a field so where we have four elements the empty the sample space a set A and a set C so how would you go about proving that these are fields where well, you have to show that they meet the the three properties of a field and if they do then they're fields and all three of these do now the next one is a little more complicated but I think it touches upon what I want to start showing and proving in this little mini series so here we have a, uh, a class I'm gonna call it C4 um, Okay, I probably should have said, assume the, the sample space is infinite, okay? So we want all the sets in, a, in S, where S is infinite, such that A or A complement is finite, okay? So if A is infinite and its, and its complement is infinite, it's not in this set. It has to be, one of those has to be finite. They both could be finite, potentially. Um... So let's prove that C4 is a field. So since uh, S um, complement, which is the empty set, is finite, that means S is in C4. So C4 is not empty. Um, let's let the set A be in this class. Okay, And our goal is to show that A complement is also in C4. Okay. But since A is in C4, then A or A complement is finite. Okay, so now there's two cases here. This could be finite or this could be finite. So let's go through both assumptions. So first, let's assume that A is finite. And then that means A complement complement, which is A, which is finite. So that, so look, we took the complement. Since the complement is finite, that means this is in C4 which is what we needed to show now the second assumption is that a complement is finite well since it's finite that's automatically in C4 because that's the way we defined it so now uh, uh, we need to prove that if two sets are in C4 their union is in C4 so then because these sets are in C4 we know A1 or A1C is finite and A2 or A2 complement is finite. So now there's four there's uh, there's four assumptions. This could be finite and that finite or this infinite and that infinite. So we have to go through each of the four cases. So let's assume that A1 and A2 are finite. Then this union is finite. Well then by this um, this union is finite so then by definition it's in C4 so that's kind of an easy one so now let's assume A1 complement and A2 are finite 
So then we know, so we want to show, we need to show the A1 union A2 complement is in C4. Okay, but A1 union 2 complement is A1 complement intersect A2 complement. Well, since we assume that this is finite, this intersection is finite. And so since this is finite, that says this is finite, so it's in C4. So A1 union A2 is in C4 because its complement is, is finite. Okay, and then in, in the, uh, case 3 and 4 are similar. So that means that we've satisfied F1, 2, and 3, and C, class C4 is a field. Okay, one more page, two theorems, but this is going to be important later in, in the mini series. Um, so, theorem one is if we have let I be an unindy index set, okay, and I can be finite, countable, or uncountably infinite, okay. So, we're going to let Fi be a field, okay. So, we start out with a sample space, and then we're going to look at all possible subsets of that sample space that creates a field and then we're going to number them one through whatever is in this index set so these are all possible fields and then we're going to take the intersection of these fields and call it script F or F which that this is saying that A if A is in F then A has to be in every one of these fields for, for all I in this index set okay well my claim is that F is a field okay so how do you show that you have to prove those three definitions okay so since the sample space and the null set are in every FI because these are fields well then it's not empty so F is not empty if it's in every one of these and we take the intersection then it has to be in there so now let's let A be in F, we need to show that it's complements in F, but if A is in F, then A has to be in every FI for all I in this index, right? It's in every one of those. So if, it's, if it's in this one, it has to be in every one. But if A is in every one of them, then it's, their complement has to be in it because these are fields. Well, if A complement is in every one, we take the intersection, that says A complements in F. So now this one, if we let A1 and A2 be in F, that means A1 and A2 are in every field, then that implies the union of those is in every field because that's a property of being a field. Well, if this union is in every single field, it has to be in the intersection of them all, which implies that A1 is in this field. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> now we have one more theorem and um, and we're finished. So let's let C be an arbitrary class of subsets of S. So we have a sample space and we take a few elements or a, you know few you know few elements of S. Okay, that's our arbitrary subset. Then um, then we let F be the unique field containing F. Now the minimum one containing F. Okay, so there there's can be lots of ways to create fields you, you, with subsets of our sample space lots um, but there's a smallest one and that's the one that's what we're saying F is it's the smallest minimal field that contains C and we say F is generated by C okay um, so this field depends upon what we start out with. If we start out with one little element or two or three or the power set that generates this minimum field. Well, um, and I, we're going to prove that this one, it exists, and two, it's a field. Okay, so here's the proof. We know that our arbitrary subset is a subset of the discrete set. Okay, so what that means is if we take S we take the power set of the discrete set, that's all possible subsets. And then we take an arbitrary subset of S. Well, it has to be a subset of this. It could be equal to that or it could be many elements less. But we know the discrete set is a field. So there exists at least one field that contains C. 
Now if we let Fi be the class of um, all fields that contain C, then and we define the intersection of those to, to be this, then by theorem 1, Fc is a field. And since we're taking the intersection, it's the smallest and it's unique. Um, so anyway, so this this is it's it's interesting. I don't know how much time I've had, and so but I'm going to end it here. And so the way that we generated this minimum field is called it's called an outer uh, uh, what's the word? We're creating it from the outer. So basically, we're taking all possible fields that contain C, and then we're shrinking it down. So we're creating it from upper bounds in a sense. Um, now there are ways that you can take these set, this set here, you know, which may be small, and then kind of incrementally expand it to get a field, and then we know it. But this theorem says start big and go down to the minimum field. Anyway, that's all I have for fields. The next talk will be sigma fields, and um, hope you enjoyed it. Please like it if you did, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.